What is up YouTube? We're underleveled. My name is Taka and today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the new Power A Fusion Pro wireless controller for the Nintendo Switch. So let's get right to it, shall we? So Power A just released this controller last month, May 15th, 2021. Now this premium controller it costs a whopping $100. This makes it the most expensive Switch controller out there. Now, we're gonna see if it's worth $100. Now, I'm very optimistically skeptical about this because while it is very expensive, I feel like it could be worth it if they did it correctly. I mean, look at the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. That's a $180 controller, but I feel like it's worth every penny and more. It's a fantastic controller. So. We're gonna see if this is worth the money. So this controller works with the Nintendo Switch, but the great thing about it is also works for the Nintendo Switch Lite. Now, speaking of Nintendo Switch Lite, we're actually giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite to one lucky winner for our 1,000 subscriber celebration. We're also giving away a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller to two lucky runner-ups. The giveaway ends on June 8th, 2021. That's less than a week away, so make sure to enter before it's too late. The link to the giveaway will be up above as well as in the description down below. Good luck everyone, and now back to the unboxing. Okay, now let's look at some of the key features that come in this controller. So we have the anti-friction rings. Now, I'm not sure if those will really make a difference, but I'm interested to test it out. Extra tall thumbsticks. I love how you can swap out the short thumbsticks for the tall thumbsticks. I feel like tall thumbsticks give me a little bit more precision, um, you know, when I'm doing first person shooters and stuff like that. Magnetic impulse triggers. I'm not sure what those are, but it sounds fancy. USB-C charging, that's fantastic. I love USB-C. Everything is switching over to USB-C now, so that's great. Soft touch finish. I love controllers that have that matte soft touch finish. I feel like it has more grips, especially when your hands get a little sweaty and stuff. Much better than those smooth, shiny plastics. I love soft touch finishes. Alp analog thumbsticks. Again, I'm not too sure what those are, but it sounds fancy, so I'm all for it. 3.5 millimeter audio jack. If you got excited like I did to see that audio jack and you're celebrating that we finally have a wireless controller that supports audio in and out wirelessly, well, Unfortunately, this is not the controller. We're gonna have to wait a little longer because while it doesn't say it on the box, on the website, it clearly states that the audio function only works when the controller is wired. I know, it, it makes me really sad too. I'm completely bummed out about that. Anyway, it also has injected rubber grips. Grip is always great for controllers, so love that. Mappable and removable Pro Pack. This is probably the most standout feature in this controller, so I'm very excited to test that out. Premium carrying case. I can only assume that's why this box is so massive. The carrying case must be gigantic. But anyway, I'm really excited, so let's not waste any more time. Let's open this right up. So one thing I just can't get over is how gigantic this box is. It's massive. I mean, let's compare it to the Xbox Elite Series 2 box. I mean, just look at the difference. That is a huge box. It's a really nice box. It's really, it's a really nice looking premium box. One thing I also like is how heavy it is. It's very, very heavy. And I'm excited because I love a weighted controller. I don't like those really thin, cheap plastic controllers. Really like this. So really excited. So Power A, they've come a long way with their controllers and they just keep getting better and better. So I'm really excited about this new premium controller of theirs. And yeah, this case is gigantic. Look how big this case is. Oh my gosh. It's really nice though. It has fusion on the front. Love it. All right, let's look at the controller. And there you have it. Really nice. Comes with the extra faceplate right on the top. That's really nice. And then you have the extra raised thumbsticks and the controller itself. Oh yeah, the controller, it has weight to it. I love that. And I love the texture of this faceplate, that matte, smooth, soft feel. Really nice. I mean, right off the bat, the feeling of this controller is really nice. The thumbsticks are nice. The buttons are nice, the D-pad is really nice. One thing about the Pro Controller, and I love my Pro Controller, but 
One thing I dislike about the Pro Controller is the D-pad. It feels very, very soft, and oftentimes I accidentally press diagonally when I'm trying to input left, right, up, and down. That's one thing I dislike about the Pro Controller. Other than that, I find the Pro Controller to be amazing, and I love it. This D-pad, on the other hand, it feels a lot better than the Pro Controller. I'm going to have to test it, but just the feel alone is really nice. So it also comes with a braided USB-C cable. This is used to charge your controller, but also wire your controller if you want to use the audio functions. It also comes with a replaceable backing in case you want to completely remove your paddles. This will replace it. Very nice. Now, while I do feel like this case is very, very big, I feel like they had to make it like this because they wanted you to carry around the charging cable wherever you take the controller because not only is this used to charge your controller but in order to use the audio function you need to have this you need to wire your controller that's very unfortunate and it makes the case very very large but i feel like it is kind of necessary all right so now we're going to go over all of the noteworthy features one by one starting with the removable face plates now i really like this black one because it has that soft matte really grippy material almost like a hard rubber unlike this one this one is a different material it's just kind of like standard plastic really smooth not grippy at all but changing them out is really simple all you do is simply lift them up on the back of them they have these extremely strong magnets so all you do is snap it into place. Easy as that. I love that. It's so simple. So what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this black one. For this white one, since it's just normal plastic, I think I'm going to actually custom paint it. Maybe make it like a purple. Maybe add some metal flakes to it. It's just going to look so nice. That's my plans for this one. All right, so now let's talk about the thumbsticks. Now, right off the bat, I love these thumbsticks. They have this bumpy kind of texture to it really grippy my thumbs are not going to be slipping off of this they feel much more grippy than the pro controller which has these rings on it but they feel a lot better now they also give the option to swap them out for these taller thumbsticks one of them has that standard bumpy texture another one has this smooth dome like texture but really nice that they give you the option to swap them out is extremely easy all you do is remove the faceplate and just lift it up then you replace it with the taller one and put the faceplate back on. Now, I love the taller thumbsticks, especially for first person shooters. I feel like they give you a little bit more precision, but I really like that they give you the option to swap them out. Really, really nice feature. Now let's take a look at the anti-friction rings. Now they're a little hard to see on the black faceplate, but on the white one, you can see that these red plastic inserts, they're a lot shinier, a lot smoother plastic than what the faceplate is made out of. And what they do is they reduce the friction when you max out your thumbsticks and move in circular motions. Now, I didn't think it would be noticeable, but it is, it is actually noticeable. It's very subtle though, but it, it feels really good. Huh. You can definitely tell that it reduces the friction. It makes it a lot smoother. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> now let's take a look at probably the most standout feature about this controller. This, this right here, these four mappable paddles. Now I play a lot of first person shooter games. I have thousands and thousands of hours in Destiny. And one very common way to grip the controller is known as clawing. And that's when you hold the controller like this. Now, holding it like this allows you to access all of the face buttons without ever taking your fingers off of the triggers and never taking your thumbs off of the thumbsticks. So you can reload, slide, swap weapons without having to remove your thumb like this. Now, for me personally, I've always felt like clawing the controller felt very uncomfortable, very unnatural for me. And that's why whenever I play first person shooters, especially in competitive play, I've always used paddle controllers. When I played Destiny on the PS4, I had a scuff controller. And now that I play Destiny on the PC, I have an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. So I am very familiar with paddles. Now, I don't really play first person shooter games on the Switch. I did try to play Apex Legends on the Switch, but I just couldn't get used to being locked to 30 frames per second in a first person shooter. But that's just me personally. Now, I do own one first person shooter game on the Switch, and I'll be testing this controller on it right now. All right, so let's shoot some Pokemon, shall we? 
So I have my A button mapped to my top right paddle. And then my B button mapped to my bottom right paddle. Then my Y button is my top left and my X is my bottom left. All right, so these paddles, they're good. They're not great, they're, they're just good. I feel like they're a bit further away from the controller than I would like. It makes it feel a little unnatural, a little uncomfortable when pressing and holding the controller. Nothing crazy, nothing major, it's just a little noticeable. Also, the feeling is a bit soft, a little bit spongy when you press them, and these paddles, they're made of metal, but especially the bottoms, when you press them, it's almost like there's some flex to them. Unlike the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller, you can see how close those paddles are to the controller. It makes it feel very, very natural, very comfortable. Sometimes you almost forget that there's paddles on these controllers. That's how close they are. And when you press them, it has that click, that nice register. These, very soft, very spongy. Sometimes I can almost accidentally press these. Now, these aren't bad. They, they just, they could be better. Now, the nice thing about this is that if you only want three paddles, you can go ahead and remove one. If you just want two paddles, you can just remove another. Or, if you don't want any paddles, you can just easily remove the entire cartridge and replace it with the included cover. It's extremely easy and it makes it really clean looking. That's a really nice feature, I really like that. Now another thing that's disappointing is that this controller has no rumble of any kind. That's a little shocking since this is the most expensive Switch controller out there. This also doesn't have an NFC reader. Now, many tend to not need the NFC reader in a controller, but I find with more recent games, amiibos are starting to become more and more prominent. For example, Monster Hunter Rise, where you can scan in amiibos to get amazing items in the lottery. I've scanned in hundreds of amiibos in a single day. Also, with the new Skyward Sword coming out, if you're playing docked and you want to scan in your amiibo, you won't be able to do it with this controller. So what's the conclusion? Do I like this controller? Yes. Would I suggest getting this controller? No. Now, that might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but just hear me out. There are a lot of things about this controller that I like over the Pro Controller. I really like this D-pad. I feel like it's a lot better than the Pro Controller. I also really like how the plus, minus, capture, and home button are actually raised up. And I really like these anti-friction rings. Now, while the buttons are really nice, the buttons on the Pro Controllers, they're not terrible. They're, they're just fine. So is it worth paying $30 to $40 more? For me personally, I don't think so. Now the paddles are nice, but unless you're in dire need of four mappable paddles on the back, I would just suggest getting the Power A Enhanced Wireless Controller. It has two mappable buttons, and they're a lot more comfortable and a lot more natural to press. Also, this is half the price of this. Now, if the main reason you want this controller is for this audio jack, this audio jack is nothing really groundbreaking. There's another Switch controller that has an audio jack. That's the PDP Faceoff Deluxe. That has an audio jack, and it's one-fourth the cost of this. I can't really think of a reason why I would suggest getting this controller over something like a Pro Controller. Don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful controller. It has a lot of really cool, amazing features, but there's room for a lot of improvements. Now, if they ever upgrade this, then I can definitely see myself benching my Pro Controller and making this my new main controller. Now, if it sounds like I'm being extra critical, it's because I play on a controller for hours and hours every single day. So I'm always looking for a new controller that outperforms and feels better than the Pro Controller. But ultimately, it comes down to personal preference, what you want in a controller. And I hope this video will help you decide if you want to pick up the Power A Fusion Pro Controller for your Nintendo Switch. But if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit that like button as well as subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.